What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Beer's Garage and welcome back to Mini Bike Monday. It's been a minute. Uh, so you guys know that this is our tried and true favorite mini bike, the MB200. And you can find the links to this mini bike and all the parts we used on this build linked below. But we have the engine pulled off. That is the 224cc build that we built a while back. We've been thrashing on that thing probably more than any engine we've ever built and it's starting to show we're starting to get a little bit of blow by and uh we think the rings are going so we're going to do a dyno video on that engine where we dyno it before and after the rebuild to see what kind of power we're making as it's a year old with a lot of hours on it i mean we've abused that engine a ton that's what uh, lonnie rode on this bike in the go power sports race in texas but there's a lot of things that need upgraded on this bike and if you have an mb200 i highly recommend this upgrade path um, this is going to be the final things that we do to this mini bike and then we're going to ride it a little bit more then take it back apart and get it all powder coated and finally be 100 percent done with this bike and it'll just be there to ride we're also going to do lonnie's at the same time as doing this off camera so both of our bikes will get these same upgrades so if we look down on the frame you'll see that our frame rails are bent they're actually bent upward and i don't know if that's where we put these on or if when it was kicking the chain in texas it's yanking the frame really bad and kind of kinking it up but it did bow it up so i don't know if anybody doesn't know these mb200s this cradle area can unbolt off you basically have uh, these long bolts here and you have one under there and there's rubber bushings inside of this rear area so if you was to pull on the chain you can see that whole area is flexing let's see if we can get that it's really hard to show you but that whole area is flexing like crazy because of the bushing in there and there's a bushing inside of here so what we're going to do is pop those bushings out today and machine us up some steel slugs to go in there and we're going to weld all this everything will be welded so we can't get that flex i think that's our main issue when we was in our race of kicking our chain that frame is flexing under hard loads and we're pushing around 20 horsepower on that engine so it's really kinking this frame over we're also going to get rid of these uh, front foot pegs we're going to cut those off and get rid of them because we don't use them anymore and we're going to weld on the rear the new foot pegs another thing we're going to address is the bushings in the swing arm there in my opinion is no need for these so what I'm probably going to do is cut the tube here and we're going to insert half inch chromoly heim joints in there and basically weld those in and we'll have to drill these holes up just one step to be half inch because they are a metric size and upgrade our swing arm with really nice heim joints and uh, that should be all that we need to do on this. I think that's our major issue with our chain kicking is those rubber bushings uh, is constantly flexing that frame so uh, we're also going to be gusseting the bottom of this after we bend it back into shape so we're going to get this thing unbolted off there and start modifying it i don't know if you can see that but our key was almost broken half from where we're kicking chains and it's yanking our key is offset and the bearings in this jack shaft are absolutely trash so we're losing power in all sorts of ways but that key we're going to replace it we're going to make sure our sprocket's good which it looks pretty good and then replace the bearings in here as well while we got this thing apart so there's that swing arm or whatever you want to call it you can see those rubber bushings in there so we're going to make sure to clean the back sides of the tabs up on front and rear and i'm going to also weld these stubs as well there's no reason to leave it just like this we'll leave the bolts in it just to make sure but we can take these bolts out now drop this go ahead and cut all these foot pegs and stuff off and then we can press these out and also replace these bearings
So on these bushings, I took a drill bit, just a quarter inch drill bit, drilled around the rubber quite a bit. And now we can grab this with some vice grips and start breaking this inner race out. And then once we break this inner race out, we can go through there with a punch or I use an old screwdriver and knock the, the other side bushing completely out. Then we can start bending back the housing of this bushing that's left over with a flat head and knock them out. And then we can machine new slugs to go in there. I'm going to spot weld them, like drill holes through. So when I press the new slugs in, I can you know, do some uh, rose welds on each side to hold them in there. Uh, we just gotta machine them at the right length. So I'm gonna work on getting these things out. I gotta break the rest of the rubber and then we can knock them out and start machining.
So guys, this thing is a thousand times better with those steel slugs in there. And I'm trying to debate whether I should weld this bottom cradle onto the bike. I don't know why you would ever need to take it off unless you was doing like a big block swap because you would have to make a new cradle that holds the engine a little bit different. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna weld up that bottom cradle. I am gonna weld up these square tube holes where the old foot pegs was gonna be. And uh, if I do weld it, then I can brace off this jack shaft tube to the main chassis of the bike to keep even more flex i am positive that's why we're having so much chain issues is because from factory they come with those rubber bushings um, if anybody's interested in getting some metal slugs to put in there you can email me at greg at rbg carts i'd be happy to make some sets put them on our website or something uh, so you can press those out and put those new ones in you don't have to weld them if you don't want to but i do think i'm going to weld in that whole cradle just to know that if a bolt fails you know we don't have that problem anymore um these heim joints are going to be a game changer as well like me and lonnie was looking at this thing and we think that was our main issues in the the gps 180 race i went back to my original uh heavy duty shocks that go power sports has for these bikes uh i do like these billet shocks i just wish they was a little bit longer if you look compared you lose about an inch of height going to these and it actually rides really comfortable at that lowered height but since i moved the basically the whole swing arm went back an inch with these heim joints and that made these shocks be leaned back a little bit more so in my opinion it would ride even lower like that so uh let me know what you think of these upgrades i think it's going to be huge i did find out our tank uh started leaking after the last race it's where the c's grab onto the frame and it's just bashing it. it's just spot welded so i'm going to get a new tank from go power sports i'm going to sandblast and i'm going to tig weld that area and uh do some bracing to it so it won't do that again but let me know what you think of these upgrades make sure to check out the links in the video description to everything we use on this part on this bike we actually got some new tires from go power sports coming we're going to put some brand new tires on these are still got some life left in them uh, but when they wear out we're going to upgrade to those so uh, make sure to use those links they do help us out and thank you guys so much for watching we'll see you on the next one we love you guys and god bless